Hello YouTube Vintage Stereo Collectors, Restores. I got two items here. Recent acquisitions from the year 1969. This one here must look pretty familiar. Yes, another Kenwood. But do you know what? For every one Sansui 555 or even the 101 that I find, I find three or four of these much reason, much more reasonable price. They just seem to come out of the woodwork. And this one is, it's a bit dirty. The lid is actually downstairs. Um, I looked it over, I plugged it in, I ran a tuner through it through the headphones. It works. It works. Controls are a little on the scratchy side. The phone sounds like mashed potatoes. Uh, kind of a, this is actually a very neat model. It's got the two magnetic cartridges, the tape head, the tuner, the aux, and then of course the tape loop. is a mono out you can even use to drive a subwoofer. You don't need it with this one. These have such great bass. Uncomplicated circuitry. 2200 microfarad capacitor is the main cap. So what I'm planning to do on this one is, of course, I'm going to recap it beef the caps up a bit. This one a little bit more than usual. I'm going to put a 4700 in here and then two 2200s in there and then a thousand there. Maybe two and two hundred there as well. And I'm looking at the transistors on this one over here. And uh, yeah, C458, 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 six there. Seven, eight, nine, C four fifty eight to replace. Um, the outputs, I believe, on these last time I did were actually Sanyo, and you can if you have a problem with the outputs, you can use two N three hundred five fives in these. And if one is bad, I change them all. Um, looks like everything's here. This is gonna, and it actually is. Despite the dust, fairly clean, not much oxide on anything. There's two different, uh, I ran into this with the TW61 I did a little while ago. This one has the earlier preamp board. So the phono preamps basically up here, two transistors a channel. This is the buffer for the tone controls. And then this is the pre-driver board for the outputs. This board is the later one. How can I tell there's two diodes here instead of one? Um, the transistors they use as well. Anyway, that one, I believe I've done quite a few of these. I'm looking forward to it because they always surprise me. And then I picked this up yesterday at a thrift store and I, I saw the case. It was sitting like this on a shelf behind the counter. And uh, I saw the case and I'm thinking, that's a 60s camera case. It just has look maybe like almost like one of those Sears cases. And so I had them bring it over to the counter, I looked at it, and out comes this very heavy, almost as heavy as this Miranda SLR. And I've had a couple of these. So this is the Senso Mat. The Sensor X had a selenium cell meter up in here. This one is actually a battery driven meter. Um, it's like a Wheatstone Bridge type of meter. And uh, I fired the shutter a couple times. Oh yeah. You know what's neat about these? They're really made for serviceability. Two screws you can take the prism off and clean the mirrors inside of it. It is it's own unique. It's a bayonet mount lens for 1969, which is kind of interesting, but it is just does fit the Mirandas. It has depth of field preview right there. Through the lens metering, which, you know, the Pentax has had it through the lens metering. I have read that Miranda was bought up by Pentax. And there's a little note left by the original owner or whoever had it. No film. Okay, no film. 
case is in good shape. It's a little scuffed in a few places. It's This is a camera that's been used to take pictures. And uh, I always like when I find film in them. Hmm. I take a little bit of a bang right there. I'm not going to force that latch. I better look at it. Battery goes in there. You can use a 357 with an O-ring around it. Um, I had this very same camera less than a year ago and really enjoyed shooting it. And there's a few accessories coming here. There was There's a cord, because it doesn't have a hot shoe on it. A remote... <laughs> I was going to say remote starter. No, it's a remote shutter release. Another lens cap. It's a hot shoe. And it's a Miranda hot shoe, but I don't think it's for this camera. I'm not sure, unless that fits on over here. Hmm, I'll have to look that up. I didn't have a hot shoe with the last one. Um, comes with a Braun flash. Uh, it, was a, it had some batteries in it. I had to wipe it out. And of course they had made a bit of a mess. Some manuals in here. So I fixed the manual up. It was falling apart. And in 1969 price list for cameras lenses. And these were not that cheap. So the Sensomat, okay, with so one point I'm sure it's a one point eight on this one. Yes, it's a one to one point eight on my lens, two hundred and nine ninety-five. Now if you remember nineteen sixty-nine, that was a pretty good chunk of change for that year. Lens chart. Um the Sensor X is actually more money. And I don't know why. I always thought the Sensor Mat was a little more advanced. It's $249.99. If you go with the 1.4 lens, $259.95. And I believe these are Canadian prices because it's a Canadian dealer from Toronto. There's even a name, address, and phone number on there. And a Braun lens. That's it. I, I blew the case out with some compressed air. And so here's two projects from 1969, um, just to keep things interesting. Um, I'll probably finish the camera first. It won't take that long to clean these up. It usually doesn't, unless there's something really wrong with them and you have to do major surgery. So I'll let you know how that goes. Thanks for watching and listening. Oh, by the way, is this stuff ever well made?